as the technology continues to evolve, there's a couple of key messages, right? The first is that, how do you continue to adapt? How do you continue to survive in your data centers where the technology is continuously changing? If I asked again in the room, how many people have data centers that are greater than two years old, or five years old, or seven years old, or 10 years old, right? A 10-year-old data center has probably gone through two or three changes in technology. How do you keep up with the power and cooling? It's a difficult challenge for, for all of us, right? With these latest technologies that Mark talked about, cloud, virtualization, it's driving more and more demand on that data center, on your businesses, right? And so, again, we come back to some of the fundamentals of how do I house that technology, portable modular data center kind of approach enterprise class data center. Uh, you're going to hear us talk, you'll hear me talk a little bit today about our family of services as we talk about it. Uh, in every one of them, you'll hear us talk about modular. Modular. You can't afford to build these, as we call, big, ba big bang data centers. Hundreds of thousands of square feet, tens of thousands of square meters of raised floor and slowly fill them up. The capital expenditure is staggering. And then the operating costs associated with those. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but the, the pressures you're going to see on the, from the IT side, how does that affect your data center? How does it affect your business? That's the area we're focused on. Right here in the middle of, above my head, 75% of CIOs now, are, instead of uh, disseminating the intelligence out to the devices, I'm centralizing again. Again, pressure on your data centers. How do you support that? Right? Um, talked about the age of the uh, data centers here to the upper left. Uh, and the expectation is we're going to start to see significant growth in cloud and cloud utilization, uh, cloud-enabled uh, applications. But we can work with customers to help them extend the useful life of existing facilities. Just because the power and cooling densities have, have changed in your data center doesn't mean I need to throw out what I've got and start over. There are some ways of, of providing for the extended life of those facilities, reducing capital expenditures, trying to help you focus those funds that you do have on uh, keeping your IT business going. So when you think about a data center, right, most customers don't take this approach. They don't look at what are their business needs and how does the data center that I have or that I want to build map up. If you really are, are, are specific or very focused on, on, on what you're doing, every customer has a different business need, right? And every customer then has a different data center requirement. Not every data center needs to be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week with maximum uptime, right? So there's a lot of cost uh, associated with uh, those kinds of decisions that are made based on your business. And then as it, how does it translate to, IT, to your data center requirements? And then once you've looked at the data center requirements, most people think of three things, right? How much availability do I need to have? You know, how much UPS, how much uptime, et cetera, right? How big does it need to be? How many square meters? And, you know, with some hopefully potential for growth. And then everyone focuses on how much is it going to cost to build it? Capital cost. I would tell you there's a couple other things that you need to think about. And we focus with our customers on these. We talked about the changing dynamics of IT. So scalability and flexibility in the data centers becomes more and more important. That's why we will talk a little bit today about uh, some of these technologies with a real focus on PMDC. But do you ever think about the capital cost? And I'll show you a chart in a moment, but the capital cost associated with a data center is, a fr is many times more, uh, excuse me, is a fraction, a fraction of the total cost to operate if you look at the 20-year life or the 10-year life of a data center. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And then the last piece is that these data centers are, smarting to get, are starting to get smarter. We've always had people who could very well manage the IT pieces of the data center. And we had people out there on the facility side who took care of the power, the cooling, you know, the water, et cetera, the, the utilities, right? Without them working together as these new virtualized cloud-enabled technologies become, uh, become uh, prominent in the, in, the, in the business, your data center's got to be able to react to both what's happening on the IT side and the facility side. So smarter is, uh, is uh, the last piece of the equation. The energy use is the biggest piece of the operating cost of a data center. If there's one message you get out of the, out of the discussion today is the uh, third bullet down here. The operating costs are going to typically represent about three to five times the capital cost. 
over a 20-year life. So I go in and I ask for $50 million to build a new data center to the board. Am I really going in and asking for $50 million or am I asking for $300 million to, own, to build it and operate it over the next 20 years? So the initial curve all the way up would represent what I would consider a traditional data center the way we used to build them. Energy efficiency in data centers has always been a challenge, right? So with power consumption being uh, uh, usually inefficient in, in traditional data centers, for those of you familiar in the industry, with an energy efficiency of about 40% represents the top curve. That means about 40% of the power going into the data center is used by the IT. 60% is to support the IT. It's for, it's for the UPS systems and the losses there. The cooling primarily is a big piece. Uh, it's all the, all the energy used by the facility. That would, so that's the upper curve. The red curve represents a facility now that's been designed more energy efficient. It would represent an energy efficiency of about 66%, which is easily achievable in most climates today. 66% energy efficiency means that two-thirds of the power is being used by the IT equipment now. Only about a third of the power is being used to support the IT equipment, again, primarily on cooling, right? The cost savings can be significant. Most people don't look at the total cost of ownership in their data centers. They look at the capital costs and don't make engineering decisions based on the, the life cycle costs of the facility. So we try to get very focused with our customers on thinking about operating costs associated with their facilities by modularly installing cooling solutions, by modularly installing uh, UPS solutions primarily, those, those big energy users in the data center, can be very energy efficient, very closely coupled to the loads that are actually in the room, uh, defer the capital costs, defer those operating costs where uh, Inefficient use of the equipment is going to really drive your operating costs crazy. It's going to drive you into that, into that initial curve. So that's the focus around the message on modularity, scalability. High density zone solutions help customers uh, in their existing facilities, help them extend the life of their existing facilities. So it's just some unique ways to, to cool those very high heat loads, which you were never intending to cool in a traditional in your in your 10-year-old data center, right? High heat loads, high power consumption in specific areas of the data center, if you treat those as a, as a, as a zone and, and cool those uh, specifically, it can, it can potentially defer the need to build new capacity. Scalable modular data center is, a, is a similar in, in effect to the uh, high, high density zones. They use some of the same technologies, but they're focused on those customers who oftentimes don't really ha haven't had a true data center. Small facilities, usually 50 to 250 square meters, um, where I'm truly providing an environmentally controlled, you know, sound, secure facility for my IT. Very scalable and that will use uh, scalable UPS solutions, scalable uh, cooling solutions, so that I can, you know, as you remember the steps, I can build what I, for I, what I need for, the, let's say, the next three years, add cooling capacity, add UPS capacity as that growth increases. Oh, and by the way, I could also take it out, right? As we go more virtualized, you know, it's, it could scale up or down. We always focus on up, but, you know, we've seen customers who are actually scaling down. They don't need as much floor space anymore, but they do need cooling. The, again, the ideas here are to be able to scale as the capacity requires. Don't do that big bang build. So, um, Again, come back to what I said at the beginning. All of our family of data centers are, have, the, have the modular concept in them.